Bruce Clevenger is the County Extension Educator in Defiance County. Uh, Bruce, um, besides being a great county educator, uh, does a lot of research uh, on tile control structures, on trying to reduce uh, or at least monitor nitrogen and phosphorus concentration in draining wa drainage water. So with that, I'll turn the microphone over to Bruce. Well, thanks, Glenn. Uh, appreciate the invitation to tag along to this, this topic about nutrient and manure utilization, and, and part of that responsibility comes to our farmers in, in our sometimes reliance on soil drainage and the connection between nutrients that we apply at the surface, uh, whether they're surface applied or incorporated. Uh, there's some potential there that uh, nutrients like phosphorus or nitrogen uh, can certainly enter subsurface drainage systems. and what's our role as farmers and how can we manage those tile systems to, to really uh, garner the, the benefits of what we need drainage for compared to what are some of the unintended consequences that we might, uh, with a little more knowledge, be able to manage and hopefully have a, a still a, a, a good system that takes advantage advantages of nutrients and ultimately into crop production. So when I, when I started an extension in, in the early 90s, uh, one of the nutrients that was in concern in, in my watershed, and I'm in northwest Ohio. I'm in the western Lake Erie Basin. Right along, a, I'm on a river town, and the nutrient of concern was nit nitrogen. Uh, the city of Defiance and many municipalities along the Maumee River uh, would pull water directly from our, our surface water, our, our rivers and streams, and these rivers at times of the year would have spikes in, in nitrate nitrogen levels, and certainly that would trigger the community's awareness or uh, observation of, of the human drinking water standard of 10 parts per million. And so when I started in, in extension, we were, we were talking about nitrate nitrogen, and it seems like now, uh, almost 20 years later, nitrogen is, is, is a less of concern for us, primarily because Many of our municipalities have constructed reservoirs that they draw water from our surface uh, rivers and streams and put water into that reservoir in prime times of withdrawal from the river and then utilize more consistently than out of the reservoir with, with higher water quality uh, being delivered then to the municipal system. So as we look in, in today's environmental discussion, the phosphorus issue that Glenn talked about in our watershed being uh, dissolved reactive phosphorus is still of concern and something that is related to drainage and maybe our potential to use controlled drainage to, to manage these these concerns. Well, conventional drainage in, in my region and in some parts of the other parts of the Midwest, we rely, our cropland may have 60 to 70 percent of the cropland has a an improvement made on the cropland to, to it, as far as conventional drainage, subsurface tile, uh, corrugated plastic tubing have been installed to do many of the designed reasons, and that's to remove that excess water in, a, in that timely manner. And if we can increase water infiltration into the soil, we reduce the surface runoff. And if we reduce surface runoff, we can reduce soil erosion that would be carried, those soil particles carried with that, um, with that water off the surface of the field at the field's edge. In fact, too, if we have a, a conventional subsurface drainage system, we hope to improve the trafficability of the farm so that we are not causing uh, uh, as much soil compaction in critical times of the year, certainly planting and harvest when we have some wetter shoulder months of the growing season where we could in fact have some soil um, moisture issues and potentially compaction. So drainage is going to help improve our soil quality uh, as well. With, um, with that in mind, um, there, one of the questions that we would a lot of times get is, uh, what's the value of our farmland? And when people call into our offices, a lot of times we're talking about the, the value of the drainage systems in those farms relating to the ultimate productivity of the farm as well as the value when those land comes up for cash rent or uh, sale. So there are some unintended consequences, though. What does conventional drainage do that we wish it didn't do? Well, unfortunately, 
drainage is in the business of moving water by, by way of gravity, and if we have soluble nutrients, we are certainly potentially exporting uh, a concentration of that nutrient out our drain tile. So in Ohio, we wanted to really research two different uh, drainage modes, uh, one being a conventional drainage mode and the second one being a controlled drainage mode. The upper graphic here uh, describes or kind of shows how we're ultimately altering the water table profile by installing that subsurface uh, tile drainage in the field. And as we install that subsurface tile in the field, we're lowering that water table and delivering that water out the outlet and into our surface waters of Ohio and your states as well. The control drainage research, uh, we're looking at these control structure devices placed in line with the outlet. And as we manage the outlet by elevation of these red uh, boards or these drop logs, in, as indicated, as we artificially raise the outlet level, we're going to retain water within the subsurface of the soil and could influence the amount of water that's available in the root zone of that developing crop near the surface. So ultimately, we're, we're using this control structure as a, as a way to manage how much water is uh, retained in the field. And with the, that water, potentially there are going to be some soluble nutrients that are going to be there as well. And there, we hope we're finding potentially some benefits of doing so. So with this type of system, when we add a control structure at the end of a, or the field's edge, it's going to require our farmers to engage into a, a higher level of management when it comes to controlling drainage outlets versus just a conventional method. Think of this graphic here, uh, maybe the top of this box is the soil surface. And that soil surface um, is such that uh, that's where we plant our crops and, and the field's edge. Across the bottom of this box, we have January 1st on the left and December 31st on the right. So there's a timeline and opportunities for managers to adjust that control structure for the needs of the field and for water quality. So as we come out of January, uh, think of this black line that, that varies throughout the, the calendar year as the water level in, in the field. As we come out of a, a, a winter or January period, we're going to have an elevated uh, water level in the field because we've, we've actually uh, used controlled drainage to retain water in that field. But the water level never, though, reaches the surface. We don't want to create a ponded condition with controlled drainage. We want to allow always a potentially aerated or freeboard zone of soil at the very top of that soil profile. But when it comes time or near planting season, we want to have a drawdown period so that we remove the boards in that control structure, we lower that water table so that our soil returns to all those advantages of having a conventional drainage system. We have that during planting. Once planting is done and maybe some herbicide applications are made and fertilizer uh, nutrients applied, uh, the crop is going and, and kind of prepared for the growing season. We can return those controlled drainage boards or uh, logs in place. And with rainfall, we may begin to accumulate or store some water in the early part of the, of the summer. And this line would certainly vary uh, throughout the growing season. And as crop water uptake begins, more dramatically in the midsummer as we get into late vegetation and reproductive stages, that evapotranspiration rate is really going to dictate how steeply this, this water reserve declines or with rainfall, how well it's sustained through the growing season. And ultimately, as roots grow into the soil profile, those roots will uh, find maybe a, a, source, a source of moisture that they would utilize for developing that crop. And whether we use that water through the growing season by evapotranspiration or by the time we get to harvest, we pull the boards out of the control structure and return that field to a conventional drainage mode so that we can increase our uh, positive or our, our good traffic ability in the field and have harvest completed in a timely manner. But again, following harvest, uh, we want to encourage management and, and encourage farmers to reinstall uh, those boards and return the field from a conventional drainage mode 
to a controlled drainage mode where during the non-growing season we have some uh, potential to have a really a positive impact on the annual nutrient loading or release of nutrients throughout the growing season. So that graphic kind of kind of illustrates what the management requirements would be uh, visiting that field edge, managing that control structure uh, for the improvement of potentially yield, but uh, maybe some uh, nutrient and water quality benefits as well. One study that had has con been conducted in, in Ohio uh, was one conducted in, in the late 90s, early 2000s, a uh, study that uh, looked at a five-year study conducted here by Dr. Norm Fawzi. He's with the USDA Soil Drainage Research Unit here in Ohio and took on a project that looked at comparing different drainage modes, free drainage, control drainage, and a third one was sub-irrigation. What I'm going to focus in on, on on the results table next is looking at the two systems of free drainage and control drainage. And so what I have, uh, there's a table here with the treatments on the left-hand column. We have both crops being grown each year, soybean and corn. Uh, those crops have replicated treatments that are in the free drainage mode. We also have that same crop scenario for control drainage uh, for each year as well. So those treatments that are measured in, in how much volume of water is leaving those plots over that five-year period. And so on, on an annual basis, uh, the volume of water comparing the mode of drainage, free drainage, has statistically a significant higher or a larger volume of water that is leaving these fields compared to those plots in a controlled drainage mode having a significantly less volume of water uh, that's leaving those plots over that five-year period. Another way we uh, kind of analyze uh, water quality concerns is the nutrient concentration of those water samples as they are collected. So concentration in this case we are looking exclusively in this study at nitrate nitrogen concentrations. And the concentrations here, uh, the essence of this five-year study indicates there's little to no significant difference in the differences in concentration when we manage the drainage system in a free drainage system or mode compared to those same crops in the same years in a controlled drainage mode. Those numbers are very similar, and those letters beside those numbers indicate statistically there's, there's very similar, if not no significant difference between concentrations. However, the value then, another element of, con of measuring water quality is the load. Think of that as pounds per acre. It's represented here as kilograms per hectare. A small conversion, but think it, they're very similar. Load uh, from this, these plots on an annual basis we start to see that there are then load advantages from the free drainage systems, uh, almost a 50% reduction here from going from a free drainage system to a controlled drainage mode of uh, managing that, that tile system. So what kind of impact can we make? Uh, ultimately, in, for nitrate nitrogen, very little movement um, from the treatments on concentration, but the volume of water is significant. And that's where we may be seeing our, our certain our benefit of water quality with these controls, excuse me, controlled drainage systems. So as a result of that study and some, some uh, other literature reviews on appropriate landscapes uh, here in Ohio, we expect that we could have a 50% reduction in this annual nitrate nitrogen load uh, on average when we are managing that, that drainage system, uh, when it's properly designed and the, the manager is engaged in, in a year-round process of uh, prioritizing that water quality is an advantage of controlled drainage in these systems. 